Morning, and thanks for tuning in to Bite Size Book Reviews. Today, I'll be talking about A Killing Frost by Shannon McGuire. So this is apparently something like book 14 in the October Day series. October is a changeling in this universe. Changelings are essentially defined as people who are part human and part fae. And this can affect like their magic, their lifespan, and also their standing in their general fae society, which doesn't really think much of humans in general. So it sounds like October used to work as a private investigator and still handles some cases in general, but for the purposes of this particular book, the focus is on her preparations for her upcoming wedding to uh, someone called Tybalt, who's also, uh, I guess, the king of one of their cat fae courts. And but you know, like during the process of preparing for her wedding, October gets the really unpleasant news that. It, she is required by fairy law to invite both her parents to the wedding. And by the rules of a fairy, her parents are her uh, blood related mother and her, I guess, stepfather. Like he's not related to her by blood, but he is fae and is married to her mother. So counts as his or as her father because humans. Uh, essentially don't exist in their lines of succession and stuff. And this is very terrible news because her father, Simon, had essentially, it sounds like, jumped off the deep end when he made a bargain with a witch in order to help his daughter. Like, he um, gave away, I guess, or swapped away a certain section of his life and certain parts of himself that made him into who he was. Like, it sounds like he used to be a villain for a while, but was starting to get better, but he traded away the part of himself that was getting better. So now he's a villain again and running around, possibly doing very terrible things. So finding him and inviting him to her wedding is not among October's priorities. But at the same time, she has no choice because if she gives insult by not inviting him, it leaves um, it open for him to make really like drastic claims, like apparently someone you have offended is allowed to ask for practically anything in exchange, like to uh, for you to make amends. So Toby sets out to try and find her father and invite him to her wedding, even though she's fairly certain like it's not going to go well. This is very much like the culmination of a series, like there's a lot of references to previous events and there are a lot of characters. I think it does a pretty good job of giving you enough background information to understand the story though, so I don't really think that was a major problem. I think something I did not like was just that some of it felt a little random, like I don't know how characteristic that is of the character or the story, but just an example, like when she found out that she was going to have to go find her father, like she sets out literally right away to go look for him, like it's it sounds to me like it's supposed to be a pretty serious quest like and pretty dangerous. I mean, you're going hunting for someone that all the fairy currently considers like a really serious villain, but she doesn't even stop for her student or squire to get any weapons. Like she pulls him out of his date and they literally leave right away. Like it seems really, really underprepared to me, I guess, to go carrying off on a quest without even stopping for supplies. And so it's really not too surprising that a lot of things go wrong. So, you know, certain actions, I guess, and things like that come across to me as a little random. And like I said, I don't know how much context there might be from previous books that might make it seem less so. But as a reader just coming into the series, I think that kind of threw me off because it mm, sometimes made the journey seem less logical or some of the choices that people made didn't seem very... Uh, reasonable, I suppose. Um, but something that I do like, I think I've mentioned before that uh, um, this particular author, I think, handles first person point of view really well. Like, I will say that I'm not typically, like, given a choice, I prefer a third person over first person. But I think this author does a really nice job with first person where it's really lively. And so in general, reading it is um, a fairly pleasant experience.